Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good people. <laughs> I know I guess I'll chuckle when you say good morning, good people. Well, good morning, good morning. This is the first Sunday of May. Yes. Wow. Oh my gosh, it's something. Yeah. The season, the, the months are going. Yeah, I was asking the students, like, which month seemed the fastest, the shortest, you know. Mm -hmm. And actually, they say April seemed like it was a normal month, like it just really just kind took, of took its time yeah, coming like, in and going out. Went by fast, February, March. I said, you know, yeah, I actually did feel April. I really did. Mm -hmm. uh, January went by so fast, and February, March, and uh, we marched right, right into April. And mm -hmm. um, like, wow. In April, I said it was something. Our son had his golden birthday. That's the last one to have a golden birthday. What in is our a golden household. birthday? The nineteenth, April nineteenth, he turned nineteen years old. So whenever you have, so when someone in your family turns their age on their birth date, then yeah, they call the, it a golden. The golden birthday. So we actually. So mine was what. I was 28 on the 28th. Yeah, I was 14 was on the 28th. Wow, back. Yes. So, you know, there you, you go. You only get it one time, so it's you golden. You only come through once, so that's why it's golden. But what is so hilarious is that we got him golden balloon, gold balloons, mm -hmm. and they are still up. They're still standing. And mm -hmm. I guess he's waiting for his picture, because I've been saying, i got to take your picture with the gold balloons. So uh, maybe that's why they're standing for us. But any other time? We maybe. Said, <laughs> Usually, any other time, they're already... So the you know. 19th, since April 19th, his balloons are still... Uh, with helium, they are still uh, yeah yeah you, you, yeah you, you're about, about after the third or fourth day they kind of float like they about out of gas they kind of you know feel so run April, down like sometimes we do sometimes we have a rough week it's like uh, I guess April did but, still stand yeah yeah so I would like to say um, as you're joining in just go ahead and um, give a shout out from where you're logging in what city or you can put their state we would like to just hear from you. Mm -hmm. And if it's your very first time, we like to say welcome, welcome, welcome. If you yes. say, oh, I came back again just to, you know, come and whatever. We just like to say welcome to you. And um, if you're on here, listen, if you hear me talking to you right now, please, if you just do a thumbs up or, you know, all if you come and join us later, you hear it. We, you know, we don't get a chance to see who's there. We just see um, we have viewers that, you know, have seen it and what have you but if you would um, you don't have to say anything just do an emoji and that is show us your name and say oh you were here we would love to know that you're here so if you would do that for us we would really appreciate it just yes. like to give you a shout out but your first time guys if you would just let um let us know um who would like to just get something out to you and just thank you for uh joining in with us on this sunday well, this is the month of May, as we said, and we would like to say happy birthday to all born yes. in the month of All the May babies. May. Happy birthday. Uh oh, uh oh, we got uh, media uh, behind us. Hey, yes. <laughs> if you are in the house, if you are online and your birthday is in the month of May, go ahead and, go ahead and tap in there. That's me. That's me. You know. Well, we have one of our very own, our ministers here, uh, birthday, uh, Minister Shawanda. We're going to give her a shout out. She's born in the month of May. Yes. Yes. Um, Elder Dana is born in, in the, the month, month of, of May. May. Elder Dana is our um, on the advisory part of our executive advisory team. Yes, for thank Emo. God for him. Thank God for uh, well, who else we have. Well, the intercessor who's been praying for us from well, since we got to Ohio. That is Kimberly Kim um, Pentegrass. So I'd like to say a shout out to you. Um, happy birthday! Yes. And May, May, May. Come on, put it. You know what? How can we forget? How can we forget? How can we forget? How can we forget? How are we, we forgetting? Forget? We're not forgetting, are we? Are we forgetting? Our very own, another leader in the house. <laughs> our daughter-in-law. Oh, yes. Shout out. Oh we gosh. didn't forget you, Jade. Shout yes. out. <laughs> our very own. Jade Peterson, we'd like to say happy birthday to you <sighs> as well. Um, she have something special well, going on for her. Ladies, yeah, boy. That we got a lot of ladies. She joined the Mom's the Club. She's part of the she's Mom's a, Club. Yeah, so she's uh, her birthday is going to be around Mother's May. Day. Mother's Day, yeah. So, yeah. um Darrell Treater right now. Two, two, right? <laughs> yeah, two for two. But all born in the month of May, we would like to say happy birthday to you. Yes. And like we say, if it's you, uh, just go ahead and put your uh, cake up or whatever. You want to put an emoji there. You're yeah, born you cake. in a that's month me, of blue, May. Get, that's uh, me. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. I know my sister Patricia. Yes. In the month of May. Yep. And um, shout out to Patricia Peterson. Shout out to Patricia. And I believe my sister Edith. You believe? I believe my sister. I'm trying to remember the date. Oh, you saw. <laughs> I'm trying to get the date. 
But uh, but you uh, said. Yeah, you I'm like, believe, believe it was me. I'm trying to find the date. The date. The date. But trying, you know I, it's I know, I know it's me. Okay, okay, okay. So That's we're, funny. We're, we're in there, okay? That's funny. Just, just, just bear with us. Okay, well. Like I, I said, I was 28 on the 28th. That was moons ago. Okay, so just, <laughs> you know, help me out here. Well, also, we'd like to say to all the moms Ewall here, locally, we are going to be getting together on um, next Saturday for a uh, Mother's Day breakfast at First Watch here in the Riverview area. Um, please, uh, RSVP, it's no um, cost to you, but we need to have for make uh, reservations and just need to know who's going to uh, attend. So mothers mm -hmm. here in the uh, area of Ewall, we would like to say, um, it's what, this Saturday at 9 a.m. and you'll get further information. Just go ahead and um, get in touch with us here uh, at Ewall. Um, 21st, sorry. Edith, oh Edith's birthday is the 21st. It was, <laughs> it was rolling, man. I'm, I'm serious. I had to get this right. You know, See, I felt you my sister, my, your I was like, man, what things. is going on here? Where is, Lord, bring it back to my remembrance. My sister Patricia is the 13th and Edith is the 21st. Okay, I'm good now. So we're meeting at First Watch Preach here in Riverview. And it's symbolic. First Watch. Moms, we are the first watch of our children. Okay, so more to come on that. First Watch. All right, so... Um, Last night, I heard some good news about encouragement ministry here at Every Walk of Life. That oh it was gosh. an awesome time in the word around the word, and I just love that. It was incredible. It's, so I call it the Vegas night. They said what happens there stays there. So they had a good Vegas night on last night. It was amazing. And I'm excited for you. It was amazing. Uh, man, the guys got together. We just shared the word, kind of um, encouraged each other, kind of broke it down. We had questions. Uh, we had a moment of, uh, of just be able to share. Just let your guard down. Darrell said it last night. He said, you know, we create a safe place. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what we strive to do here at Ewald yeah. anyway. In any, every department, in every yes. uh, ministry, every facet of who, we, who you all is, we, we strive to create a safe place mm -hmm. where you can let your guard down. As you, you would say sometimes, uh, uh, take the treasure out of your box and display it and... and we encourage, we 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 encourage you with the love of, with the word of God. We love you with the love of God, and that's what that's what we strive to do here, in every given moment. So it was it was amazing. Awesome. It was just God. The words can't explain it. It was good. Well, um, every month of this year. Uh, we share with you all that the Lord has laid upon our heart to just uh, encourage every month and for us to walk in this month and um, experience his goodness of grace. Of course, that's the theme for this year, experiencing the goodness of grace. Uh, every month, uh, we have a word, two words, whatever. You just a constant, uh, well, the word first one was meditate, but we want mm. you to meditate on the every okay. month. And, you want to read them? No, I have it. You have it? Yes. Roll with it. I roll, have it. Roll, roll, roll so with it. So the month of um, January, we, um, we share it, meditate. And um, that was our heart for us to meditate, medicate on that word of God for your life. And then in February, to um, make... I said healthy I had choices. make healthy choices and you know when we meditate we on the word of God we will be able to make those healthy choices but it's something I have to do, make the healthy choices and then so that's um and then oh my goodness I said oh I got it I got it you say you want to read it go ahead and read it okay I'll go ahead and read it, it because she, she had to see it like I was with my I sister's really birthday did. there we go <laughs> January was meditate on the word February is make healthy choices March was believe, believe yes April was we win, okay. and the word for the month of May, drum roll, brrr, boom. Be faithful, faithful. We gotta be faithful, it's action. You're doing something faithful with what is applying, mm -hmm. what you have already heard, what you have meditated on, the choice you would be faithful to it. Say, oh, I believe, I believe, you know, I'm, med I'm meditating on this word of God. Yeah. I made the healthy choices. Um, uh, you know, last we said we win yeah. and we said we believe, but be faithful to it. Don't give in this time. Don't give up or just be faithful to the things that you're doing. Even mm -hmm. when you don't see it, yeah. we still have to believe it, but be faithful to believe it. Be faithful to make the healthy choices. I'm, I want you to just to apply mm -hmm. this word in your life. Okay. So now to the spooky spiritual, that's mm -hmm. not all that deep. You know, you say, what's, what's the word? What's, oh my God, what's the word? Say, be faithful. 
that, that's it. That's what you got. That's all you got. Yeah. That's it. Because consistency is key to breakthrough. That's if you're it. faithful to it, mm-hmm. you know, if you, you just you just stay right, stay the course. That's it. God's going to show you amazing and great things that you didn't know you could do or you didn't know you had in you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's powerful. Be faithful. Oh, my gosh. That's a good stuff. Okay. Well, okay. Before we jump on into everything, how about a word of prayer? Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the opportunity to sit before your awesome people of God, your world changers, your atmosphere adjusters, your precious sheep. Father, we declare that every heart is good ground to receive the word and every ear, Father God, is anointed to hear the word. Father God, we declare that the seeds will fall on good ground and they will bring forth a harvest that brings glory to your name. Father God, we come against every spirit of distraction, mm-hmm. every spirit of slumber, every spirit uh, uh, that will try to steal the word from your people. We are not ignorant of Satan's devices. He will use simple things to try to rob your people of the word. But today, we declare they receive the word in every form and all fashion, Father God, the full measure of what is needed in their season right now. We ask you tonight, today, that you would just think through our vocal, think through our minds and speak through our vocal cords, none of us and all of you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 All right. You got it? Mm-hmm. You good? I'm good. All right, let's roll. Good people, we are still we are we are still flowing in the series of the goodness of grace. And our foundation scriptures are John chapter 1, verses 16 through 17 in the Amplified, and 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 through 10 in the Passion Translation. These are our foundation scriptures. Our lesson scripture is 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7 in the Passion. But we're going to go ahead and read the foundation scriptures. So we can get this, um, get on into what we feel God has for your heart during this time. John chapter 1, 16 through 17 says this, For out of his fullness, that is the abundance of his grace and truth, we have all received grace upon grace, spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, favor upon favor, and gift heaped upon gift. I love that part. I know. Heaped. Yes, it's just heaped. like piling it up, mm-hmm. man. Um, for the law was given through Moses, but grace, the unearned, undeserved favor of God and truth came through Jesus Christ. He didn't earn it. He didn't deserve it. Nothing we could do to earn it. There's nothing we could do that puts us in a category of deserving it. This grace that we're talking about came through Jesus Christ. That's the only way that grace could get here was through Jesus Christ. Now, 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 through 10, Passion, as I said before, this is Paul writing the church at Corinth, talking about a little conversation he had with God and the things and the challenges that he faced and his reaction to him and God's answer to him. And here we go. But he answered me. This is God answering Paul. He said, my grace is always more than enough for you and my power finds its full expression through your weakness. So I will celebrate my weaknesses For when I am weak, I sense more deeply the mighty power of Christ living in me. So I'm not defeated by my weakness, but delighted. Why are you delighted? For when I feel my weakness and endure mistreatment, when I'm surrounded with trouble on every side and face persecution because of my love for Christ, I am made yet stronger. For my weakness becomes a portal for God's power. Man. All right, now we're going to step into where we're talking about grace, Old Testament grace versus New Testament grace. Old Testament grace, we discover, we discover that it speaks of well-favored, kindness, precious. You know, sometimes they say, if I found fa- grace in your sight, mm-hmm. you know, there's another way of saying, I found favor in your mm-hmm. sight, then, you know, do these things for me, or can you, you know. But New, New Testament grace speaks of a divine influence upon the heart and its reflection in life, a divine influence upon the heart. Divine meaning God, God's influence on your heart on your life speaks of grace. Why? Because divine influence on your heart means you're not led by your emotions. You're not led by your will. You're not led by how you, how, uh, um, what's the popular vote. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're influenced by God. That's it. You're influenced by God. Proverbs 3, in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. Right. Is I'm influenced by him. Uh, yeah, at one time I did answer you based on how I felt during the day, mm-hmm. based on what my my season was in my timeline 
uh, or based how I was being treated is how I, how I answered you. But now I answer you based on the divine influence that's on my heart. That is the grace. That's the goodness of the grace of God. All right, here we go. Our lesson scripture was originally given to us by Pastor Angela way <laughs> back in January. <laughs> it's not that far back, y'all. All right, here we go. And it's coming from 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 8, verse 7, the Passion. And he says this, you do well. This is Paul talk, talk, talking to the church again in Corinth. You do well and excel in every respect, in unstoppable faith, in powerful preaching, in revelation knowledge, in your passionate devotion, and in sharing the love we have shown to you. So make sure that you also excel in grace filled generosity. Mm -hmm. Now the past four weeks, we have, past four Sundays, we have excelled in revelation knowledge. Mm -hmm. We've excelled in having it. We've even excelled in mm -hmm. sharing it and God, God using time, God using Jesus. discussions, God using uh, your life's journey, mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. using uh, a series of even things that the enemy tries to do to you to bring you revelation knowledge. Today we're hitting number five. What's number five? We have passionate devotion. We excel in every area of life. We excel in passionate devotion. Okay, well, okay, well, let's, let's, let's break down this passionate. Let's go with the word passion. The capacity and privilege of experiencing strong feeling or emotion. I'll read that again, because I got two here. I actually got three here that I'm looking at. Okay. They say somebody's passionate about something. They have a capacity and a privilege of experiencing a strong feeling or emotion. Another one is this. They have a fiery enthusiasm. You have people who have a passion for, for uh, sports. Some people have a passion for basketball and that's it. Some people have a passion for baseball, football. Some people have a passion for, for uh, ballet and the theater. Some people have a passion for Broadway. Some people have a, you have a passion for a thing. Some people have a passion for their lawn. Some people have a passion for their children, mm -hmm. their marriage, their, you know, their spouses. You have a capacity or a privilege of experiencing strong feeling or, emo or emotion. You have a fiery enthusiasm for this thing. But when we talk about a, a devotion for God, this is what I wrote down. You have an inner spark slash fire provided by the Holy Spirit. When you have a passion for God and his kingdom, when you have a passion for the things of Christ, when you have a passion uh, that God's um, will is done in the earth, whether it, be done, done, whether it be done through you or through your brothers and sisters, that his kingdom of light advances and the kingdom of darkness shrinks, you have an inner fire that is only provided by the Holy Spirit. Now, we had to break this down because it's a passion, passionate devotion. Okay, what's devotion? Well, devotion is to give up wholeheartedly. This person is devoted to this. They, they've given up wholeheartedly to it. They are to direct the attention wholly or chiefly to attach to something. One, one definition is this. An ardent love or affection. Another one is attachment manifested by constant attention. An attachment. He devoted this. An attached. An attachment. They have an attachment that's manifested by their constant attention to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're honed in on it, man. And nothing else is pulling them from it. And this last one that I love is this: a yielding of the heart and affections to God, with reverence, faith, and dutifulness. Mm. I'll say it again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a yielding heart and affections to God. I love that part. A yielding heart mm -hmm. means that I, I, I'm pliable. Mm -hmm. I bend toward him. I fold toward him. A yielding of the heart and affections mm -hmm. to God. A yielding to of God. the heart, a yielding of affections to God. With what? With reverence. I honor him. With faith. I believe in him. And with one translation says piety, mm -hmm. which just means a dutifulness or de dutiful. I'm, 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 I'm bound mm -hmm. to him. Mm -hmm. And so passionate devotion. Wow. An inner spark provided by the Holy Spirit that, that gives you a yielding of the heart and affections to God. I'll just, I'll just put them together. So, you know, yeah. we, do, we do compound words. You know, <laughs> you know how you do um, 
uh, uh, was it? it wasn't Sesame Street. It was Electric Company. Mm-hmm. Electric Company, years ago. I don't know if any of you remember that show. But Electric Company used to uh, do the compound words. One person, you see a silhouette of two people. One on one side and one on the other. They would say like, uh, 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 lawn, mower, lawn mower. Something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, they'd be the compound. So we're putting passionate, devotion, putting it together. is basically mm-hmm. an inner spark, an inner fire provided by the Holy Spirit. For a yielding of the heart and affections to God with reverence, faith, and dutifulness. This one is share with that yielding of the heart. Now, I'm just thinking about yielding, and you think about it in traffic when you have the, you know, when you know the red in a traffic light, the red <clears throat> means um, stop, stop, and the yellow um, means you know slow, slow, slow down. Mm-hmm. And you have a the uh, green mean go, and you mm-hmm. just think about even a yield sign, mm-hmm. yielding. And I'm thinking about God. We're yielding to him. We're not going for time. We're not going to stop, mm-hmm. but we're going to yield to hear what he has to say, mm-hmm. how, which way to go and making sure, you know, and making, give, giving you, him the right, right when you, you yield, you're right. giving him yeah, you, the yeah. right to, uh, to, to speak the mm-hmm. right to, um, you know, hear us, what have you. And I would, when you said that passionate heart, that passionate devotion toward God, mm-hmm. um, you know, I was looking up for a song, you know, to share with y'all what you're saying, for this month as far as being faithful and just to be faithful, you know, I was saying for us to be faithful to him and all the songs was God being faithful to us. That's good. And I was, and I was saying, wow, God is no song. I don't know. Maybe there's a song out there. Please share it with me. Mm-hmm. But we're talking about him being, we being faithful to him, him being faithful to his word. Mm-hmm. Being just, but, Where's the songs, you know, for us to love on him? But if we actually get into the songs of how much he is so faithful to us, Mm -hmm. we will want to be faithful to him. Mm -hmm. And in that, with this passionate um, devotion, that's a faithful place to be in, to be faithful to him, how much he loves us, how much, how faithful he is in forgiving us Mm -hmm. and loving us and long suffering with us. Um, he's always there. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us, even though we can leave him or we can go. But he's steady. He's there. Yeah. He is faithful to take care of us, faithful to love us. And so in return, out of everything you have received in the word this year uh, so far, now is May. And we're saying, let's be faithful to it. That's good. You know, it's not um, faithful saying showing up here every Sunday. We can do that. That's needed because you get in a word. Yeah. But in this word, I just hear action. We heard that this morning. I got, but act on it. Mm-hmm. Apply That's this what I said. word. Said, uh, one, one, one definition said an attachment manifested by constant attention. Constant attention. It, it's it, we can see you're attached to this. We can mm-hmm. see you believe in this. Mm-hmm. We can see this is this yeah. is who you are. Mm-hmm. Because we see you give constant. We see by your actions that you, yeah, mm-hmm. you have constant attention to this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, Charlie has devoted his garden. Why? Well, man, every time he he, he gives constant attention to it. Yeah, you know, we 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 we. Hey, we, he comes in from work before he goes to work. He's out in the garden. When he comes home from work, he's in the garden. Mm-hmm. Uh, we say, hey, Charlie, you want to go down to you know beat up to get some wing? No, nah, man, I'll catch you later. He's in that garden, mm-hmm. and it shows it show, itself. It shows because you can see. How things grow, and you can right, see how, how right. plush things look, and exactly. you can see how vibrant things look. And you go, mm-hmm. man, you can you can tell it's being manifested <laughs> that he spends time in his garden. That's it. Now, is he doesn't have to tell you he's devoted to it. You he can see. show it, you can see he's devoted to it. Mm-hmm. Now it's different when he says, "I'm devoted to this. I'm devoted to my garden." And you go in there and you see weeds and and rabbits mm-hmm. and. You see everything looking brown, and she said, "Are you really devoted? What garden is he? What garden is he devoted to? Because I don't see." You can tell. So he's just saying it. You can tell by actions. Yeah, that's it's it, the manifested. Actions. The attachment yeah. is manifested. That's it. In the constant attention. And you know, a few months back, and I've been saying it all through this year, but just agreeing, we have to come to a place to agree with God's word. And once we yeah. agree with His word, you can have a good day on that day. I agree with His word, and you're just you know in a good place and you're agreeing with his word and hallelujah praise the lord next day come you agree with his word hallow, you know you're faithful and then something else happened and but being faithful to it even when you don't feel it mm-hmm. but agreement is not about what you feel mm-hmm. or what you see you said i agree to it so you agree with what god said and you adding you just saying this is what god said 
I'm going to agree to it. No matter how I feel inside, I'm going to agree to it. And you're going to be faithful to what he said, yeah. regardless of how you may think it should mm -hmm. turn out or what have you. But I'm going to be faithful. God, you said this. I'm going to be faithful. And I'm going to speak what you said. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be faithful to what I say. Yeah. Because my saying is his word. Yeah. So if I start off saying his word and I start off meditating on his word mm -hmm. and letting that word be a medication to my soul, mm -hmm. I'm going to be faithful to that. Yeah. You know, um, yep. I shared with you all a while back and I said faithful with, uh, uh, you say, you'll know my uh, Matt session, the therapist, he was telling me the things I have to do. You know, I'm trying to get the the muscles after my accident, the, the muscles not working properly or mm -hmm. just staying there. Don't understand how all that works. But he said, he gave an exercise to do. He said, now I will know if you're not doing it when I come back. He can tell if I'm not doing them. Mm -hmm. I have to stay faithful to it. Mm -hmm. And I find myself, oh, I'm, I'm doing the exercise, whatever. He asked me to get uh, some type of band or what have you, band. resistance band, and I didn't do it. I said, oh, yeah. It's like, but that's to help you. Mm -hmm. And we could we do that in our lives. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the word right here. Read this word. Did you read it? I go, oh. You know, we do that with ourselves. We hear the word. But we have to be faithful to read it. Yeah. We have to be faithful to apply it. It shows, mm -hmm. just like the guard we're talking about, in my body it shows. The simple, it may sound simple, but the simple um, exercise he has given me is to help me mm -hmm. get better. It's to help that muscle to be activated and work like it's supposed to work. But if I don't do my part, you know, he can come bail me out of the pain. Yeah. But you know, to stay out of it. That's that's the goal, to stay out of it. Stay out of the pain. And actually let it work properly. And that's what this word wants you to stay out of self and just actually let the word work in your life because God's grace is sufficient. He'll do all that, you know, we rely on him. And you will just see what we read earlier mm -hmm. in your weakness. You'll be able to celebrate because you know that it's his strength that's working on the inside of you. Yes. And you can walk in confidence mm -hmm. knowing it's God. Yeah. Okay, so we have to be faithful to it. Yeah. And you'll see the results of it. That's good. Amen. Because you're actually getting in some of what we're going to be talking about yeah. here shortly. Um, oh, man. That is, that is good. That, uh, okay. When you talk about agreeing, the agreement. Uh, yeah. I think over in Amos it says, how can two walk together except they be in agreement? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is you're walking on this path of agreement. Even though there's times you may not agree to wholeheartedly with this, I'm not leaving the path. But you're agreeing that you're in agreement. I'm agree yeah, I'm agreeing <laughs> yeah. to be in agreement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes being to agree to be in agreement is not saying that you won't feel like, man, mm -hmm. I don't want to do this. I don't want to have to change. Mm hmm because we, we, we talk because we're in agreement in a marriage we, you're in agreement in a marriage yeah, okay. and a lot of times we have to make sure that certain key things are out of that way to enhance the agreement right 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 some things things like selfishness mm -hmm. uh, laziness or pride those mm -hmm. some those things will affect the I don't want to agree because who I am no no mm -hmm. I gotta let that stuff aside so I can stay in agreement because as long as I stay in agreement we will reach the agreement yes you know how they talk about a discussion they say well, we're gonna talk about this till we, till we reach an agreement that means this this is a this is a journey we're, we're, we're trying to get to we're, we're mm -hmm. on this path uh either communicating with dialogue or whatever uh but we got to get to this place of agreement and it's like it's not that god has to agree with me <laughs> yeah that's it on this path i'm i chose to walk with him and agree with him so i have to agree with him and how he mm -hmm. does life and how he and wants me to flow with our children and how he wants me to flow with my spouse and how he wants me to handle my, my business and how he wants me to treat the employees mm -hmm. or how he wants me to treat my employer. Mm -hmm. I, I have to walk with him mm -hmm. and flow how he wants me to flow for me to experience the full measure yeah, of the it. grace and the goodness that's given. Mm -hmm. I won't, I'm not saying you won't experience any by not doing it his way. I'm not saying that. But I'm, what I am saying, you will not experience the full measure. Mm-hmm. Of his goodness and grace that he has for you. Yes. He's like, why settle for thirty percent when God wants to give you over a hundred? Mm -mm -mm. Okay, what do I got to do? What do I got to do? Okay, this is what you got to do. Oh man, I don't know about all that now. 
I mean, I, okay, I, I can see where you want me to do this part here, but man, you know, I gotta apologize. <laughs> I don't know about all that. Now I, we just we just go on over it and just say we learn from it. No, you need to apologize. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit is telling you to go ahead and get to them and say, "I'm sorry, I was wrong," and let me do the steps I needed to do to make this right. Mm -hmm. That's what repent means: change of heart, change of mind, change of direction. Because throwing a brick through a window and saying sorry that don't fix the window. You guys, okay, how much is it going to cost? Got to go down and you know, call a company, have them come in. We got to clean up all the glass. And here you go. We got to clean up all the glass. And even though we think all the glass is gone, we still got to make sure we clean and look like there's still glass around. Because a lot of times those pieces will still, ha still hang around and you could get cut on it. And it'll bring you back to the memory when you broke the window or when somebody broke your window. And you can't, you cannot allow yourself to go back in guilt or go back in anger. You still have to stay on this path of with God in agreement <laughs> to keep moving forward. Mm -mm. Don't know who that was for, but we're going to get into this. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> now today, we talked about we have passionate devotion. How long are we going to be on this one? I don't know. Y'all know we don't. I, I don't. I just, I flow with him. I, we don't, we just work. We're in agreement. Here. You know, some people say, ma'am, I don't know. I just work here. Yeah. You know, some people got to throw that in. You know, I just, I'm just doing what I can. All right, here we go. Uh, we have a couple of scriptures here for us tonight, today. I keep saying tonight. It's almost like you say good morning a lot of time at right. night. I gotta get this thing together here. Second Kings chapter twenty. We're going to Old Testament today. Second Kings chapter twenty verses one through eleven. I'm going to be reading this to you from the uh, New International Version, or as people would like to call the NIV. Okay. Okay. And to open up, well, this is this is probably going to be explain the story mm -hmm. itself. Don't need the intro. Here we are. In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order because you are going to die. You will not recover. Wow. This, that's something in itself. This, when the prophet comes to your house, he didn't just say, well, we see some things, you know, you need, you need to watch out for it. Because if you don't watch, God's going to take notice. He said, get your house in order. Make sure your will is prepared. Make sure everything is updated and current. Make sure life insurance is all together. Make sure whoever's getting what gets what and why. He said, because you are going to die. Well, maybe maybe it's not a bad sickness. Maybe, you know, it just, uh, it just feels that way. I, no, he said, you're not going to die. You will not recover. That's it. That's point blank. That's the mm -hmm. pen, that's that look. That's the that's the period on the center. No comma. No semicolon. No. We'll see. That's it. Now I love what Hezekiah did in verse two. After the prophet says this, the prophet said what he came to say, and he left. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Verse three. <laughs> Remember, Lord. How I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept, wept bitterly. Verse 4. Before Isaiah had left the middle court, the, Lord, the word of the Lord came to him. Go back and tell Hezekiah, the ruler of my people. This is what the Lord, the God of your father David says. I have heard your prayer. And seen your tears. I will heal you. On the third day from now, you will go up to the temple of the Lord. I will add 15 years to your life. And I will deliver you from this city. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of king, the king of Assyria. I will defend this city for my sake and for the sake of my servant David. Then Isaiah said, prepare a poultice of figs. That's like a, a paste. They did so and applied it to the boil, and he recovered. Hezekiah, asked, Hezekiah had asked Isaiah, What will be the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I will go up to the temple of the Lord on the third day from now? Isaiah answered, This is the Lord's sign to you, that the Lord will do what he has promised. Shall the shadow go forward ten steps or ten degrees? Or shall it go back 10 steps? 
It is a simple matter for the shadow to go forward 10, st 10 steps, said Hezekiah. Rather, have it go back 10 steps. Then the prophet Isaiah called on the Lord, and the Lord made the shadow go back the 10 steps. It had gone down on the stairway of Ahaz. Now, oh, the stairway of Ahaz is more like a, a sundial. It was, like a, it was a sundial. And that's what they used back in those days. They didn't have clocks or watches. They used the sun. And they would, you know, had a dial set and it had like either numbers or had uh, certain symbols around that dial. And as the sun moved, that shadow moved as the sun moved. So, you know, high noon would be straight down, three, four, however it went, that's how it went. But we hear here, we have here that the king of Israel, Hezekiah, had became deathly sick. And for some and it, it, Apparently he had boils or a boil mm -hmm. that was untreatable, uh, wouldn't heal, couldn't cure it. And God told God told the prophet to tell him, you're not coming back from this one. Mm -hmm. And I love what Hezekiah said. Hezekiah didn't cry or beg to the prophet. He didn't say this is not right. He turned his face to God. Can I say something really quick right there? Jump in. Just really quick. This I wrote down. If you say the prophet who came to him said, this is what the Lord says. Mm -hmm. And so that's who he went to. Right. What the Lord has said. What is mm -hmm. the Lord telling you? That's who you talk to. Don't go to anybody else. Go right there to what the Lord has said. And that's who he went to, to get his answer. Jump in. Okay, here we go. He turned his face to the wall and he prayed. I love how he said this. He said, Lord, remember. Mm -hmm. I have walked and this is you talking about that earlier about walking together agreement mm -hmm. I've walked in other words this is my lifestyle my this is this is how I fellowship he said I've walked before you he said mm -hmm. faithfully faithfully and with wholehearted <laughs> devotion so he had a passion faithfully. he had a passion for God oh, yeah he had a passion for God and he said and and I was de I'm devoted to you and he said and and have done what was good in your eyes mm-hmm he had a relationship with him. He could go to him, right? That's it. That's it. He That's developed. He, he developed mm -hmm. in his walk with God. A a relationship was established mm -hmm. to the point he was like, "Does it have to be this way?" Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, God. I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, because sometimes yeah. people say it's not work based. No, it's not. But your love and devotion for God will produce something in you too. No, okay. Let's see if I can say this right. <clears throat> You working, you know, you working in the church or you working, working ministry or acts of, or acts of, of performance. And you try to check that off as I'm righteous mm -hmm. or try to check that off as I'm faithful. Man, I clean this church every Sunday, every Sunday. I mean, I'm here every weekend cleaning this church up. Uh, man, I come in here and I, I, I blow off the leaves off the, off the front of the church and, and I do all this. So I know that count for something. Mm -hmm. If you're doing it in that aspect as a check off, no. No, it doesn't. It's null and void. Mm -hmm. But now devotion if there's a, a relationship with God and your devotion to him, mm -hmm. it births something out of you. Yeah. Then that is what God take note. That's what God, that's where God takes note. Okay. Um. Man, because I, I told you God honors those who honor him. Um, where, where did I put my notes? Oh, man. This is in regards to... Okay. Eli the prophet. And I think we talked a little bit about it a while back. Eli the prophet. First Samuel chapter two. Eli was a prophet of Israel. Eli was the one who spoke over Hannah when she was carrying Samuel. She said, God, if you give me a son, I will, I will raising him up, giving him back to you, and he will be with you all the days of his life. And she was there praying one day, and you couldn't see her speak, or her lips were just moving. 
And Eli thought she was drunk and told her, you can't be coming here for no drunken speeches. And she said, no, my Lord, I'm not drunk. I'm, I was praying to God. He said, oh, okay, well, let it be unto you. Well, then after he was, after the boy was born and he was weaned and he was raised where he could just live off food, she brought him back to the temple and left him there. And he served Eli. And this is the same one that heard the voice of God, Samuel, Samuel, and Eli, you know. Eli said, well, go back and lay down. And if, the, if you hear the voice again, say, speak, Lord, for your servant here. Same Eli, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Same one that gave me instruction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the same Eli who had two sons. Sons by the name of Hophni and Phinehas. Eli was the priest of Israel. He worked the temple. But his sons also were there working the temple. But they were not doing it as God had instructed. And they, do it, they didn't do it as God had instructed. What do you mean? That means that the, there was portions that came for sacrifice. And it was already, according to the Leviticus law, when you brought a sacrifice, a certain portion was given to the priest to live off of because they don't work. That Their work was taking care of the temple, praying, uh, burning incense, giving sacrifices, being before God. That's what they did. But the sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, got greedy. They began to take more than their fair share. Not only did they take more than their fair share, they began to bring women into the temple to have sex with. Now, prior to all this, God had told Eli, he had promised, he had, he had made a vow to Eli that I will, out of your lineage, out of your house, all the prophets, I'm sorry, all the priests of Israel will come forth. But because God called Eli on it and, God, and Eli never addressed it with his sons, you got a priest who is, who is, who is walking, who is serving in God's temple, and yet allowing his sons to do all kind of things and is going unchecked. Even when God warned him, deal with this. And I think a lot of times what has happened in churches and a lot of times you have people who have been hurt and bitter is because we have leaders that are in position. And I'm going to go, I'm going there. We have leaders who have been who are in position and they've allowed their children to have a, 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 a Carte Blanc card that allows them to say whatever, do whatever, and act whatever with other with people that are part of that ministry, and it goes unchecked. Mm -hmm. I will say this to you, sir and ma'am. God is holding you accountable. And like my pastor said, he may not settle up every Friday night, but he's he gonna settle up. God's gonna call everything into question. God's gonna call everything. It, 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 it's He's going to deal with it. And we have to make sure that we're not stumbling blocks. Mm -hmm. So here we go. After all this stuff took place, God comes before him. And, well, actually, Samuel comes before Eli with the prophecy that God spoke to Samuel. And Samuel says these words. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. Therefore, the Lord said, the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father would walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, far be it from me for those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me, I will lightly esteem. That means disdain. That means put to the side. So God will honor you when you honor him. Mm -hmm. Now, here's a, here's a wild thing about God. God will still provide for you. He'll still take care of you. He'll still love on you. But as far as that honor thing, there's there's he said, I honor those who honor me. Honor holds weight with those who are passionately devoted mm -hmm. to the kingdom. Honor. Yeah. The passionate devotion mm -hmm. was developed out of a, of a relationship. Yeah. The relationship allowed the honor to come into, to come forth. Mm -hmm. So here we go. He said, I faithfully walked in your way. I faithfully, I, look, I walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't error. Mm -hmm. Not one part of my, he said wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. That means 100% of me was in. I was all the way in. 
I wasn't hoagie. I wasn't hokey pokey. One foot in, one foot out, <laughs> one foot in, shake it about. Yeah. Do the hokey pokey. Now I wasn't doing that. Now go ahead, babe. No, it's that Eli couldn't do that. When you're saying about the God honor, mm -hmm. and I was just looking at how Hezekiah was able to go to God and share his heart. But Eli, because he said, I did the things that you said. Mm -hmm. And Eli went to Samuel. Mm -hmm. And what did he say? You know, he, he didn't have that. Um, the, the wild thing about it was after yeah. Samuel had gave him the judgment of mm -hmm. God, Eli, was his, his response was, well, the Lord will do what the Lord will do. do. Yeah. He didn't say, well, let me go talk to God. Yeah. He didn't say, let me. I'm God, on your ways. You know I, you I, do what I, he's, You know, he, he, he he you had know no. He don't have that it's almost like he had no evidence. Yeah. I have no evidence or no proof mm -hmm. of, of doing what you said I should have done, and I didn't do it. He couldn't. He didn't go. He could not go to God and say. It's almost like here you go. Here's one for you. It's almost like someone being written up mm -hmm. for being late okay. constantly. That's a good example. And they say, okay, look, look, look. You've been late. We only work here five days a week, and you've been late three out of five for the last four weeks. And we have a document. Next time you're late, we're, we're letting you go. They said, next time you're late, you we're letting you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you get up that morning. I'll be on time. You you on time every day that week, and then Friday you get up, and you got a flat tire. Oh my gosh! And so you try to let you you change it. You you get it done. You get to work, and you're, you're five minutes late. They said, we told you, man, we have to let you go. Yeah, but my tire. We didn't say if it was a legitimate reason. We just said, if you were late. Mm -hmm. You're constantly late. So you got no leg to stand on. You, you can't come back with, no, this is wrong. I know I was I was on time. No. No, because it, like we talked before, sometimes it's a character thing. Mm -hmm. If we, your character part is always late, then we pretty much nine, nine times out of ten, we know that this... This is going to go mm -hmm. down the same path. Even if I give you another chance today and say, okay, you know what? Your, your tire was flat. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee you next week you're going to be late three times. <laughs> so let's not go do this dance. Let's just go ahead and get, you know, well, yeah, I'm, I was right. I got no leg to stand on because I'm always late. Eli was like, well, the Lord will do what the Lord will do. Whether whether he was saying in a, in a, in a sense of the Lord is sovereign, he does what he wants, or <clears throat> he was saying it in a, in a way of the Lord is right because I, I, he's already given me warnings and I've done nothing with it. Mm -hmm. So I guess, yeah. Mm -hmm. But Hezekiah was a different story. He said, no, I, I've done everything. You told me I've been devoted to you. I did things that were good in your eyes. You watched over me and I know you watched me. Mm -hmm. And I handled your kingdom in a way that I felt would honor you. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, that before Hezekiah, before Isaiah yeah. got out of the courtyard, it says before Isaiah had left the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him. This is God talking about go back and tell Hezekiah, the ruler of my people, this is what the Lord said, the God of your father, yeah. David, I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. Mm -hmm. Get this. Not only will I heal you, he said, on the third day from now, you'll be able to go to the temple of the Lord. So you'll be able to spend time mm -mm. with me. Not only that, I will add 15 years to your life. Not only that, I will deliver you from your enemy. Mm -mm. He said, and I will deliver you, you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city for my sake and for the sake of my servant David. He says, not only will I heal you, not only will you recover, you'll be able to come back to where I, to where you, you met me. Yes. Mm -hmm. The relationship will be restored. Mm -mm -mm. And <laughs> I love that because he didn't leave him saying he could be, you know, live in 15 <clears throat> more years, but stand there in his sickness. Right. You know, stand in that pain. So with him going to be on this earth 15 more years. Mm hmm. He can go out. He can go to the temple. He can, and the things that God has given him, that's the kind of God mm -hmm. that we serve. Yeah. And um, which with this, with this devotion, of pa uh, passion, devotion with God, I was talking to our son, uh, Darrell, I think yesterday, whatever, but just the benefits of our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. 
this is a, a benefit. We don't no have benefits. to go out like you know someone else would. Right. But because this, because your your um, passion, and devotion with him, that mm -hmm. that trust, you're just actually agreeing with grim with his word mm -hmm. and you have this you have yeah. the benefits of it I love it he said I didn't know you know as far as him being sick with the bulls whatever he had to stay inside mm -hmm. but these 15 years that he had we don't have to live the same way right he granted the 15 years but in health and wholeness yeah because he, he, he dealt with the first thing mm -hmm. first yeah he said first I'll heal you in yes. other words you won't die from this you mm -hmm. will recover mm -hmm. two he said, you'll be able to spend time with me again. And three, I'm adding the years. He added the years that, after the, the relationship was restored. Mm -mm -mm. The walk will, will continue. You and I will continue to walk together. you walk together healthy and whole. Now get this. Verse 7. Now Isaiah said to the people, okay, prepare a paste or a poultice. What do you mean? They took figs, you know, mashed them up, added some things to it. Mm -hmm. And then they applied it to the boils. So this was this was the medication. It was health. Mm -hmm. It was like natural. He didn't have they didn't you know they didn't have a, a pharmacy. He couldn't run down to CVS and grab some. They 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 created it what what God had already made on the earth. And I remember my dad said that years ago. He said everything that you need, everything that is that is needed for man's body to live, God had already created it. It's here in the earth. It's here in the earth. And here we go. He said they did so and they applied it to the boil, and he recovered. Now here we go. He recovered. That was gone. Okay, well, great. Now, Hezekiah, I heard what you said, preacher man. I need to know this. He said, he asked, he said, what will be the sign that the Lord will heal me? Because he, they applied the paste to the boil, but the boils were still there. This is the first day. You know what I'm saying? This is the first day. He said, how will I know that the Lord has healed me? What sign will I have that the Lord has healed me and that I will be able to go to the temple three days from now? So Isaiah said, okay, well, this is what the Lord's saying. He said, the Lord's at the sign. He said, uh, uh, now let me ask you a question. He said, do you want to see on the sundial the shadow go forward 10 degrees or the shadow to go back 10 degrees? And Isaiah said this. I mean, Hezekiah said this. Well, the sun's going to go forward anyway. It rises in the east and sets in the west. He said, it's already, it, it automatically does that because God initialized that when he made creation. He said, what I want him to do is... is Go back mm -hmm. 10 degrees. His track is already east to west. His track is already going forward. Mm -hmm. He's always always going forward. So Hezekiah was like, no, I don't want him to go forward on this one. Because me just looking at it to go forward, that's just, even if I was sick. He said, the day that I was sick, I saw the, the sun go forward. Mm -hmm. He said, I want I want to see the sun back up 10 degrees. And it said, the prophet called on God. And God made the shadow on the sundial back up 10 degrees. And that was his sign that he gave him. That was the sign he showed, I honored you because you honored me. That's the sign that I, I showed you that, my thing is this, there's precious gifts for God's people that have a, a passionate devotion for him. <laughs> and a lot of times people say, well, God, I don't have no respect to the person. If you read that scripture in context, in context mm -hmm. he was talking about his standards, and he was talking about judgment. I have no respect of a person when it comes to judgment. Disobedience? Dishonor me? He said, there's no. No. Yeah, I have I have no I have no uh, uh, preferential treatment for disobedient. I deal with it. And that's what God is saying. That's why a lot of times we were like, oh, uh, I'm, I'm going to deal with it. And God said, Venge vengeance is mine. And I love how God said that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Because a lot of times, we, we don't know how to handle, how to handle yeah, vengeance. Right. We don't know how to handle vengeance. Vengeance is like a, 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 a sharp blade with no handle. We'll be trying to grab it and cutting ourselves. Trying to cut somebody else. Mm -hmm. God's like, let me handle that because I know how to deal with vengeance. Mm -mm. Because I don't do it with I don't do it with the emotion. You you try to do it with how, how, this is how you did me. I'm going to show you. No. He said, let me deal with it. Now, passionate devotion Man, passionate devotion allows you to make your case with God, but also allows you to see the wonders of God. Passionate devotion gives you direct access to God. Like Honey said earlier, 
the prophet came and told me what God said, but I'm going to go straight to God myself. And I want to clear that. I want to say something on that as mm -hmm. well. It's not the do away with the prophet. No, the prophet was no. sent by God. He was sent by God, right. And so when he told him those things, the Lord says, because... Um, Hezekiah had a relationship with God. He was able to talk to God. Mm -hmm. But you see, his answer still came back, through, back from through the, prophet. the prophet. God went back to the man of God that he sent in the beginning mm -hmm. to turn around and, and tell him, back. this is what I said. Right. So don't he, not hear what I wasn't saying. You know. Mm -hmm. So he talked to God because he always talked to God. Right. And he received what the Lord said through the prophet. The prophet. Both times he received what he said. And then, what under, and then he wanted to understand it. Mm -hmm. and asked him so Elijah um, Isaiah. Isaiah had to hear from God mm -hmm. concerning him just like he heard him tell him he's going to die mm -hmm. well that same word came from the Lord said he was going to live yeah. and walked him through it so yeah. we do need the prophet okay yeah because he, here's, here's, he was sent by God here's the thing God, God not off, God not, yeah. he's not an author of confusion so he go why get would healed. he tell him why would he tell him yeah. you're going to die mm -hmm. he, go tell the, he goes to the word of the prophet the word of the Lord says you're going to die and the prophet walks out, and then God goes straight to Hezekiah and said, no, you're going to live. God don't work like that, yeah. And Hezekiah lives, and prophet over here already said, you're going to die. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Now I'm across. Oh, wait a minute. I told you you were going to die. The Lord told me you were going to die. Now everything's in question. Mm -hmm. But God's God of order. Yeah. So he still flowed through the order of right, which he makes right, contact with right. man in the earth through his man or woman of God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, yeah, don't. I won't, I'm not saying he won't talk to you. I'm not saying he won't speak yeah, to you. He but there, there, he because he will. There are some things that is going to be given through by his prophets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just is. Now, last, we'll just hit these two and then we'll, okay. we'll, we'll wrap it up. Genesis chapter 5, verse 21 through 24. We're going to talk about another man who, another person who was passionately devoted. Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 21, verse, verse, Genesis chapter 5, verse 21 through 24. And I'm going to be reading this to you in the New Living Translation. And then we're going to close it out with Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. Okay, here we go. Genesis chapter 5, verse 21 through 24. And, you know, we're going all the way back to the beginning, all the way to the front part over there of the book. You know, even if you are not well versed in the, in the books of the Bible... You can at least know you can find two. You can find Genesis and Revelation. You may say, well, Pastor, I found a concordance. Say, okay, you done went too far. Go, come a little further. Okay, here you go. Genesis. All right. 5 verse 21. When Enoch was 65 years old, he became the father of Methuselah. After the birth of Methuselah, Enoch lived in close fellowship with God for another 300 years. And he had other sons and daughters. Verse 23. Enoch lived 365 years, walking in close fellowship with God. Then one day, he disappeared. Why? Because God took him. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Just give me a snap. You know... There's some things <laughs> you read a little snapshot, a little verbiage, and you're like, okay, well, that doesn't make any sense to me. If he walked with God, if, he, he didn't. Uh, with Hezekiah, he gave him more time. With Enoch, you know, he just took him. What is that? Hang on a minute. It said after the birth, you know, Enoch, when he turned 65 years old, he had his first boy, Methuselah, first child. And it said after the birth of Methuselah, the Bible says that he walked in close fellowship with God. For another 300 years, close fellowship, walked with him for in close fellowship, was devoted to him passionately, mm -hmm. given over to him wholeheartedly. Agreed with him. <laughs> Agree with him on every yes. area. I was faithful. Mm -mm. His attachment manifested constant attention. Mm -mm. How you figure that? How did, how did it manifest constant attention? God took him. You, you preacher man, I think you get messed up here. You already said in verse twenty one, verse twenty two, that he lived close fellowship with God for three hundred years, and another three hundred years till he and he lived to be three hundred sixty five, and then after that, it said walking in close fellowship with God. God took him. Okay, well to get the understanding of it, let's go to Hebrews chapter eleven, verse five. 
in Hebrew chapter Hebrew chapter eleven is what they call they talk about the halls of faith. Then you read it says by faith this one did this and by faith this one did that and all this done and that, and there's a constant devotion. Mm -hmm. A constant devotion to um, a, constant de a constant devotion to God in every mm -hmm, way. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Uh, and, and different people they showed by faith. And faith, actually, the word faith just means, like I said, a constant devotion, passionate devotion, a, a devout, you're devoted. Mm -hmm. Now, it says this, chapter 11, verse 5, New Living Translation says this It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. So in the in Genesis, it said God took him. It means he disappeared. That means he translated from this natural realm to the heavenly realm. That means he missed seeing death. Death did not take him. God transported him or translated him into heaven. He just walked right, or he looked, he just walked right off the road of, you know, of earth and walked onto the streets of gold. Wow, how did he do that? It says, for before he was taken, he was known as a person who pleased God. Mm, mm, mm. I'll read the Amplified <laughs> for you. The Amplified says it like this. By faith that pleased God, Enoch was caught up and taken to heaven so that he would not have a glimpse of death. And he was not found because God had taken him. For even before he was taken to heaven, he received the testimony still on record that he had walked with God and pleased him. The testimony that he had was 300 years in the making. Because if you remember over in Genesis, it said Enoch, verse 22, after the birth of Methuselah, Enoch lived in close fellowship with God for another 300 years. So with him living 300 years, a lot of people saw him, a lot of people knew him, a lot of people interacted with him, a lot of people had encounters with him, and they said he disappeared. He said, well, man, we know this. Huh. Enoch, please, God. He left that testimony. Mm. Even after he left this world, he left the testimony that he pleased God. And here you go. Passionate devotion leaves a testimony. Mm -hmm. Passionate devotion leaves a legacy. Passionate devotion leaves a mark that can never be erased. When people look at there or people hear of you or people i remember uh years ago in ministry school i had to do a uh, a lab and to do a a, a a sermon or teaching mm -hmm. and the title was what does your name bring mm -hmm. what does your name bring enoch's name brought he pleased god mm -hmm. in his name brought he had a, devo a passionate devotion to god in his name brought he was wholeheartedly committed mm -hmm. to the lord in every area in every way. Your wholeheartedness to God, though it may not be spoken to you, though it may not be shared, though you may you may not hear it. Yeah. Your wholehearted devotion is actually writing your testimony. Your passionate devotion to God is the pen in God's hand that is writing your testimony that others will see. That man, my grandma might have had a third grade education. But you know what? When she prayed to God, fire fell. I know she pleased the Lord. Me, not so much. Me, I'm trying to get it together. But I know my grandma pleased the Lord. How you know that? I could see it in her actions. I could hear it in her voice. I could see it in her tears. I observed it in her prayers. You, they leave record. We, and, 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 and I love the thing about it. Paul wrote this to the church. We, you, me, we, we have a passionate devotion. Meaning what? We have a testimony that is being written, not by our hands. Mm -mm. And it will remain until the Lord returns. We're gonna stop right there. Yes, sir. Uh, okay.
Yeah, I think I'm going to stop right there. But I will say this. There, well, let's seal this first. Okay, and then I yeah. talk about the other part. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I, oh. <laughs> Y'all bear with me. Stop. Yeah, I said, Pastor, you said you stop it. Okay. <laughs> Hebrews. I did Hebrews. Okay. I mean, the, but the thing that ties oh, to Hebrews, okay. the thing that ties to Hebrews, the thing that. Psalm 91. Okay. Psalm 91. And, you know, a, a, a lot of people, a lot of, uh, I would say, a lot of brothers and sisters in the Lord know about Psalm 91. They say, oh, that's my protection scripture, Pastor. That one I have on my wall. That one I have in my car. That one I have, etched, you know, I got that one tattooed on, on my forearm. That was, that's my protection scripture, Pastor. Because, you know, he, he just talks about he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And that is all your benefits listed. Mm -hmm. But what I want to get to is verses four at the very end, verses 14, 15, and 16. Now, before all, you know, the, the, I love the part where he says, you know, he'll cover you with his feathers. I love the part where he says, you will tread on the lions and the scorpions and, and, and the, the cobra and all that good stuff. But now this is God speaking mm -hmm. to you. You have already shared your safety abiding in God's presence. You've declared all the benefits from verses 1 through 13. And here God comes sharing what he's going to be doing because of your devotion to him. He says this, because he has set his love upon me. Mm -hmm. This is God speaking. Because, Tracy, you have set your love upon God. Mm -hmm. Because, Christina, you have set your love upon God. Because, Regina, uh, no, Leon, uh, Darrell, whoever may be watching, Lori, because you have set your affection, you have set your love upon him, this is God speaking. Therefore, I will deliver you. I will set you on high because you know my name. He said, you will call upon me and I will answer you and I will, and I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you and honor you. There's an honor again. I will honor you. Why? With long life, I will satisfy you and I will show you my salvation. Because of the passionate devotion in verses 1 through 13, mm -hmm. you have gotten heaven's attention. And because you've gotten heaven's attention, heaven will tell you what he offers. God tells you what he offers. Because you honor me, because you set your love upon me, because you are devoted to me, I will be with you in trouble. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> and sometimes yeah. it's like this. You have, to, you have to think about it like this. I'd rather, be, I'd rather God be with me in trouble than to, for me to be without him out of trouble. Mm -hmm. I got no troubles. Well, if you don't have God with you, that's your, that's your first trouble right there. Mm -hmm. That's your first problem right there. You don't have God. He said, I will be with you in trouble mm -hmm. because you set your love upon me. Mm -hmm. He said, and you, I will honor you. I will show you my salvation, my soteria. I will show you my complete deliverance on both on every side. I will show you my encompassing protection mm -mm -mm. because you have set your love upon me, because you have devoted yourself to me, because you have, let me see what the other scripture said, not the scripture, the de definition. Because of the fiery enthusiasm that you have, a yielding heart, a yielding of the heart and affections to me with reverence and faith, I will honor you. <clears throat> and that's part of your benefits mm -hmm. of passionate devotion. We're going to get into some other stuff, but that's where, we're, that's where we're starting with right now. I think that's... Yeah. I think we'll stop there. Praise God. Uh, oh, and also... Uh, okay, put a pin there, and we're done with this. We're done with this class. We're done with that lesson. Fold it up. I want to make a correction from last Sunday. Well, what did you do last Sunday? <laughs> last Sunday, we talked about Joseph dealing with his brothers. And I said that he was 32 at the time that they came back. And he wasn't. Joseph was actually 39. Because he came before the Pharaoh and was exalted at 30. 
there were seven years of good years, so that makes him 37. Then the second year into the famine, 38, 39. So he was around 39 or 40 when his brothers came before him and bowed like they did in the dream he had about the sheaves of wheat. So I told you 32, it wasn't 32, it was actually 39. Well, Pastor, it's all right. No, no, it's not all right. I want to make sure it's right, it's accurate. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure I share that with you. Okay, I'm done. Okay. Go. <laughs> Actually, we were talking about that on our Sunday ride. He said, wait, 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 wait. That didn't say that. And that's something we just want to be accurate in the word of God and just making sure. But we encourage you to read your word as well. But sometimes you can hear someone say it incorrect. Mm -hmm. And that's how hard to make sure it comes from the word or something. Yes. That, um, it was opinionated or uh, just so made up some numbers. Up. So we just want to make sure that was correct. And, you know, after that word on Sunday, um, talking about Joseph I just want to end with this in our our time with uh with this oh my goodness this passion devotion with God and, and like I said being faithful on this month and in that relationship you have with him mm -hmm. your heart would just want to be faithful to him and agree with him because of his love and seeing the benefits of God yeah. and God showed me something in the word and um was just thinking about Joseph if you remember the teaching on last Sunday when um Joseph all the things with his brother selling him and uh, everything he went through in his life and um the time he he got in a position so fast forward yeah. to that 39th year to see his brothers and for God to remove the um the pain the he just forgave forgave them mm -hmm. he removed that from him and you know God said you know I did that for you too God can have you to forget things mm -hmm. from somebody hurting you yeah. or for somebody miss you whatever it may be and I remember years ago and years later someone came into my life and shared with me and told me they sorry and I couldn't even remember what it was they shared what it was it was very hard for them to say mm -hmm. but you know what I didn't even remember and I'm so thankful, but I can see that person through the eyes of Jesus. I want to let you know, God, we, he is. We read these things in the Bible, yeah. but I'm saying he's doing the same thing today. here today. today. You know, and it's more I can say on that we're going to, because we're ending right now, but God can do that very thing mm -hmm. that he did for Joseph. And, you yes. know, we hear the words, um, how, you know, we can forgive, but we can't forget. That's man-made stuff. I'm telling you, we can forgive. And guess what? We can forget by the Holy Holy Ghost. Yeah. God can remove pain. He can remove hurt of somebody doing you any, you know, a type of way. Mm -hmm. And you know, we say words, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words never hurt. That's man made up. Because yeah, words, words could hurt. hurt. They can hurt. They could hurt. But we're right. talking about in him what God can do. He can heal. Yeah. And that in itself, to want you just to have that passionate devotion with God mm -hmm. knowing the benefits what he can do even when words hurt but yeah. his words heal yeah that's today good. if it's you that need Jesus as your Lord and Savior to experience his goodness of grace in your life and say I don't know Jesus like you saying you know he can forgive me not alone, I'm not saying forgive somebody, forgive me of my sins. He want to mm -hmm. save you. He don't want anyone to perish. We are honored that we can invite you to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If that's you, just go ahead and just uh, message us there. Mm -hmm. We have a prayer team. It's a number that's going to come up. Somebody is there waiting for you to pray with you. If you say, yes, I've been walking this way. However, I have not been, you know, uh, agreeing with him. My words mm -hmm. have not been agreeing with him. I've been agreeing yeah. with my words of what I think, but I just need to get back to this place and rededicate myself, you know, turn from what I was doing, just rededicate myself back to God. Mm -hmm. That same number you can call, that same number you can reach out to. Um, if you just want prayer, whatever it is, we want to pray with you. We want to add our faith with yours yes. and believe God for his th uh, for your life on today. We want you to experience God's goodness of grace for mm -hmm. your life. It is possible. I shared that part with you. Yeah, God shared it with me, but I shared it with you to let you know God is faithful. Yes. Um, Wednesday night, I, get, I want you all to look at last Wednesday if you haven't. 
um, on the YouTube channel and join us this Wednesday. God can snatch you up out of that trouble, out mm -hmm. of whatever it is, yes. and just love on you and for you to experience his love for your life that you and his grace mm -hmm. for you to extend it to someone else. And yes. that's what it's about. Yes. So we uh, invite you to those things. And also, if you say, hey, I want to be a part of every walk of life. How can I you know, join in and be a part? You can do so just that same number. We would like to welcome you here to every walk of life if that's you. You don't have to be in the same city. As you know, we have virtual, um, we have members, members yeah, mm -hmm. in different cities. So you don't have to be in the same city. But we want to extend that uh, welcome to you if you want to be a part. So I need a place to just be fed. If that's mm -hmm. you, just go ahead and we would love to... Um, be you know at our faith with yours yes. in that so that's all i have right now um as far as that but we do have opportunity to uh give into the ministry mm -hmm. that passion devotion that you love it on the lord he love it on you you know you can speak to him and ask you what to give us uh, concerning offering time yes you know um tithing uh, what tithing is, um, offerings, seed, or what have you. Members here, we we, uh, we sow, uh, we sow also give tithe. But if you mm -hmm. do not have the understanding of it, you can go to YouTube and look that up. We're talking about giving, how to give through tithing, seed, first fruit, mm -hmm. alms giving. That'll be it's taught on that. And, and but, let me know, say, I'll, say this, I'll say this real quick so we can go. And it's, it's something because you you make a vow or you make a commitment mm -hmm. that you're going to do that. Flow with it. Yeah. Don't give it a second thought. Flow mm. with it. I, I remember uh, this this year. Uh, I shared with my wife. I shared with honey. I said, "Honey, uh, the first bo the bonus I get, oh, yeah. the first bonus I get in this year, uh, I'm, I'm giving to God." I said, "The first, first bonus I get, I'm giving to God." And your office actually believe because you've had it for a while. We hadn't had a bonus in yeah. like two or three years, and I'm like, we're, "I'm believing God for a bonus. I'm believing God. It's gonna be my first fruit." I said the first the first bonus I get of the year the first quarter I'm giving to God, and boy everybody was like man we ain't seen nothing we ain't seen nothing and all of a sudden man this is the best year this is, this looks like this is gonna be the best bonus we've had in like three years, and some one part of me here you go that part of you like man you don't sit there this is this is gonna be some good money I said ah this is God's this this is God's we, we have we have to look you mm -hmm. you allow a passionate devotion mm -hmm. give that to God. But yeah. past this is my first bonus. This is this is the biggest bonus I had in years. You gonna tell me you're gonna forsake? Mm -mm -mm. Don't forsake all of this for that little brief moment yeah. in time. Mm -mm -mm. Don't. And God it. is bigger and you know than what? the bonus. God is bigger yeah. than your bonus. <laughs> and we did it. And we did it. And it seemed like time after time after that, just things have just been just flowing for us. And and God can do the same for you. In that area, He is no respected person. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm sorry, dear. No, just that's just encouraging to the people. Just saying, you know, because you can hear something, so give this, and then immediately it want to be taken away from you. But don't do it. It's so much the benefits of it. That's what we want you to receive. It's not for us, um, especially us actually uh, giving that invitation to give, and we're the pastors. Yeah. Um, it's not about us. We want we really our hearts want you to receive the goodness of uh, and the benefits of just giving. Mm -hmm. And you know, so much more in that. Not so much about you know, and the bonus did come after that. Yeah. You know, because the first one he did do and then that released other bonuses that come. Um, but I'll say this, in that it's more than it's not talking about just the finances. Right. Whatever whatever you believe in God for. It could be your uh health, your children, answers, mm -hmm. uh where you're gonna move or what have you, the peace of God to rest upon you to meet this person, that person for your business, what have you. Mm -hmm. But because you release that mm -hmm. the blessings of that, the benefits of that, there's so much more into it. Yes. We love you guys and um Oh, it's, on, it's up there, the how to give or what mm -hmm. have you. And the ones who mail it in, as you, make sure you notice there's a new mailing address there. And uh, the ladies, moms of EWAL, we hope to see you at First Watch on Saturday, celebrating you as a mom um, together on this Saturday, First Watch Riverview at 9 o'clock. Awesome. Please hit, remember here that at every walk of life, Jesus is Lord. And it's, it's about, about where you're going. Not where you've been. We'll see you guys Wednesday night.